about COVID and mental health. Joining us to talk more about that this afternoon is Dr. Kenley McMinn, a psychologist at Baylor Scott and White. Uh, Dr. McMinn, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me and thank you for including mental health as part of this really important segment. It's all tied together, isn't it? Uh, you know, we always tend to focus on physical, but uh, the mental part of it, and I think a lot of us have learned this firsthand in this pandemic for the first time, is certainly a huge portion of this. What are you seeing as we head into year three of this pandemic now? We do see that, you know, people have sort of loosened some of their own restrictions in some cases, but what are you seeing from the mental health standpoint right now? Absolutely. I think similar to the virus itself that's kind of come in waves, what I've been noticing is that sort of different aspects of mental health and that impact has been coming in waves too. So, you know, in the beginning, there was a lot of uncertainty, there was a lot of anxiety and kind of some panic as it's kind of gone on. It's gotten into more of just trying to trudge through and kind of deal with the day to day and still making those adjustments, trying to find this kind of quote unquote new normal and what that may look like. Um, but it is very, very common for people to be struggling because the whole world is just adjusting and dealing with this uncertainty uh, and this trauma that we've all been witnessing and dealing with. And, you know, we, we just, you know, touched on this a moment ago, how there is the physical and there is the mental and it's all tied together. Uh, I want to ask you this because we've been taking uh, questions from our viewers today. And it really is such a balance, isn't it? Because, you know, what might be better for you physically in some cases uh, might make you suffer in some ways mentally. We, we heard from a mom who says her children have been homeschooled since the pandemic began, which is a long time ago, as we all know, uh, mm -hmm. that they're fully vaccinated. Uh, they've had their boosters, et cetera, but she just doesn't know. She doesn't know if she feels safe yet letting them go back to school but so many parents have worried like, man, I'm really isolating these kids too. And they've really, you know, that's taken a toll on them as well. It's such a hard balancing act. It really is. And I mean, the impact on kids and also to be fair, the impact on parents who are having to, you know, transition maybe to homeschooling when they weren't doing that before. And that's a huge shift. That can be a huge burden. It is certainly not easy to be staying at home with any children and multiple children of different ages. Um, and so I think it's been, a matter of trying to kind of get creative when we can of finding different ways of coping. Um, and I think just keeping in mind those different self-care strategies because so much is out of our control right now and there's so much uncertainty. We still, we don't have that crystal ball that helps us predict the future and how much longer this is gonna last. So trying to capitalize on any of those areas where we do feel like we can regain a sense of control, even just kind of, what am I gonna make for dinner tonight? Can I make plans with a friend? You know, even just via FaceTime or Zoom. Um, and just trying to still engage in those ways when possible. Yeah, I think even those of us who think that we don't like routines a whole lot uh, have come to find that, okay, I guess I liked routines in a lot of ways because it sure beats unpredictability constantly. Yeah, we as humans, we tend to actually thrive on structure and predictability. And so this has kind of thrown all of that out the window. I want to ask you about the shame and embarrassment factor uh, associated with getting COVID, especially for people who, you know, say that I've taken all of the right precautions, you know, I've, I've been wearing the mask, I've been socially distancing, I went and got my shots, I got my booster, uh, and, and there's sort of this stigma with a lot of people where they say, I, I just don't know how I got this, and, and, and there's almost a, a shame in that. Absolutely, and I think the number one thing, and you, you use the word stigma, which I think is spot on, that because there is just kind of in the media and societally, there is just still a lot of, um, I think, judgment sometimes that can come. Um, even like you said, when people are doing everything right. And so the advice that I would give for people is number one, kind of guilt and shame and all of those emotions, they tend to thrive in secrecy. And when we keep those things to ourselves, because we feel like it's not something we want to talk about or broadcast to the world. So the number one thing I would say to do in those situations is just talk to somebody that you love. Let them know kind of what you're feeling. Talk to somebody that you trust, whether that's a family member, a doctor, a therapist, a friend, anybody. Um, and I nearly guarantee you're going to get kind of reassurance. The other thing being, sometimes we are way harder on ourselves than we would be on other people. So even trying to take the perspective of, okay, if my friend or loved one was coming to me and telling me that they feel this way under these circumstances, what would I be telling them. And I'm betting that you're not going to tell your good friend or your loved one, like, yep, you should be ashamed. You messed up. Um, you're going to be reassuring and you're going to tell them, you know, that they did everything they could. And last question here, and I only have about 30 seconds left, so sorry to cut you down at the knees on this one, but a, a curious uh, uh, thing here. Uh, what do you do uh, with someone who disagree with your views on vaccines? We just had somebody ask, how do I talk somebody into getting this? I love them and I want them to get it, but how do you do it if they haven't done it already? 
Number one thing to know is that you are not going to change anybody's mind whose mind doesn't want to be changed. So my number one advice is always to just start by asking them, are they willing to have that conversation and willing to listen and know that it may take repeated attempts, repeated conversations. A mind is a tough thing to change. Yeah. Kenley McMinn, uh, Dr. Kenley McMinn, a psychologist at Baylor Scott and White. Thank you for uh, imparting some wisdom to us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Thank you.